Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. All of the Fujifilm X cameras like this X-T2 over here come with some really nice film simulations and I've had a load of fun shooting them. But there aren't actually that many bundled with each camera. So today I'm going to show you how to create and save your own simulations in camera. These simulations are very, very powerful, very successful simulations and they really open up the power and potential of these Fuji X cameras. The images look like film and the whole experience captures something of the feel of using film too. All of the simulations I'm going to show you today are taken from Richie Roche's Fuji X weekly website. It's very clearly laid out and there are lots of different simulations for each sensor type. I'm using the X-T2 today, so all the simulations I'll be looking at are for X-Trans 3 sensors, but the method is the same for all of the Fuji X cameras. Now, while it's very simple in principle to create these simulations, like anything, it's a process that needs to be learned. And there are a couple of things that you'll need to remember. They're created by manipulation of the camera's settings with a heavy reliance on white balance, as you might imagine, but more of that later. So with all that out of the way, let me show you how to actually create one. First of all then, set your camera to JPEG, not RAW, and that is in the image quality setting, and that's pretty much the first heading you come to. So we'll set this one to Fine. Then navigate to the Save Edit Custom Settings menu, and that's where all the simulations are saved, and it's right at the bottom of the first image quality page. Now, I keep the first slot untouched and empty with all the default settings, so I can quickly return to default if I need to. You can see that I've already made quite a few simulations. What have we got here? We've got Agfa Optima, Cine Teal, Kodak Ultra, Tri-X Pushed, Cine Still. So we have got one or two already there. And if you've got an X-T2 or above, you can name those settings. On the X-T1, you can't. There's an empty slot here at number two, so let's use that. And we navigate right to get into it. So all the adjustable parameters are found here. Dynamic range, the base simulation we're starting with, grain effect, white balance, and so on. We're using an empty slot to which nothing's been applied yet, so we're starting with a completely clean slate. So now we go back to Fuji X Weekly and find our recipe. So here are the simulations that the X-Trans 3 sensor can do. And let's have a go at... Where are we now? Let's have a go at Kodachrome 2. So we scroll down the page, there's some description of how the simulations are put together and the actual instructions for making them are all laid out nice and simply, nice and clearly right here. So it's now just a matter of entering and saving those settings into the camera. So let's work through them. So we'll now put those settings into the camera. So we click right to enter that particular slot and this simulation is built around the classic Chrome simulation. That's what it uses as a base. So let's do that first. Dynamic range is DR200 so let's put that in.
highlight is plus one for this simulation. So there's plus one. And shadow is plus two. So we go to shadow, pop in our plus two, and there we are. Color is minus one. Noise reduction is minus three for this simulation. So we'll enter that setting. It really is very easy to do. It's just like painting by numbers, really. Sharpening is plus one. So let's get some sharpening in there. Grain effect is weak for this simulation. So we will apply that. And ISO is auto up to 6400, but we'll come to that shortly. Now you'll notice that I haven't set the white balance yet. That's because you can't save detailed white balance changes under the Save and Edit Custom Settings menu. So although we have a choice of different types of white balance, if we click right on any of these, nothing happens. So we can't change the value of the red or the blue within that white balance profile. That's right. You heard it correctly. You can't save detailed changes in white balance in the save and edit custom settings menu. All you can do is save the type of white balance you want to use, whether that might be auto, cloudy or fluorescent, for example, but you can't actually adjust them from here. And I really have to wonder why. Perhaps somebody at Fuji had eaten too much cheese the night before. Well, I think they probably had because this really is quite an omission. However, we clearly can't adjust white balance from here. So let's save what we've got before we go any further. To save, don't click on save current settings at the top there. Instead, navigate left, which will bring up a box asking if we want to save, which of course we do. So we click OK. So we've now set everything except our white balance. Right, one more thing to do before we look at the white balance, and that is to select the settings that we've just set. So we're now in the settings that we've just set. And if we go to our main uh, menu page, not the page that we've just been using to add those settings, but the main image quality page that is the first page of the menu. When you push the menu button, you'll see that all of those settings that we've just entered are reproduced on this page also. They wouldn't have been if we hadn't selected that custom setting, but now that we've selected it, all we need to do is fix up the white balance. So let's do that now. So we go to the main white balance heading, click right and right again. And we can now see that in fact, we can change those settings. And for this simulation, we want plus three red and we want minus four blue. Press OK to set. And our simulation is now complete. We now have our finished simulation of Kodachrome 2 film. So if it's one we like and we want to keep, we'll need to name it. So let's do that now. We need to go back into the preset. down to the almost the bottom 
and so we'll now enter our name slightly time-consuming procedure but it is nice to have those film names there if your camera can't save film names though no need to worry because they work absolutely fine without this little finishing touch it is a nice finishing touch though and to save it we have to go to set and we'll now see that there is our Kodachrome 2 film simulation complete with name don't forget that to actually use the simulations once you've set them you'll need to go to select custom setting and select the setting that you want to use and we're now ready to go we can actually use our film simulation do remember though that the white balance cannot be saved in the custom settings menu so every time you select one of your own simulations from that custom menu you can only adjust the white balance in the main menu and not the actual white balance menu on here so every time you select your film setting do remember to change your white balance afterwards Richie Roche over on Fuji X Weekly has come up with a workaround which assigns different white balance types to each simulation. Now I take a more old school approach using a device I found in a history book that doesn't need any batteries or cables. It's called a notebook. There's also a Fuji X Weekly app with all the info on it and that's available on the Play Store and the App Store and it tells you all of the simulations that have been created for these cameras and all of the cameras that they will work on so that really is an invaluable guide it's available on the Play Store or the App Store and it works on Android or iPhone I make a note of the film each slot is set to and whichever one I use I select it and then set the white balance in the main menu from my notes so let's say that we're starting completely from scratch go to the menu go to select custom settings we'll select the setting that we've just created which is Kodachrome 2 and we'll then need to set our white balance because that won't have been changed by selecting that setting and for this one it's plus three red whoops and minus four blue press ok to save and there is our Kodachrome 2 simulation loaded into our camera. Now, having used a simulation, we'll eventually want to return the camera to the default settings and use one of the inbuilt film simulations that we can find here, the ones that come bundled with the camera classic Chrome, Proneg High, Proneg Standard, etc. So, in order to do that let's set it back as it was in order to do that let's say we want to use Velvia we want some nice pumped up pushed up colors so we'll select that film simulation but even though I've selected an inbuilt manufacturers simulation 
those custom settings that we use to create our Kodachrome 2 simulation are still there. Surprisingly, the camera doesn't return to default just by selecting one of its inbuilt film simulations. So we need to go a little further. There are two ways to do that. You can either go to all the trouble of resetting these various settings by hand, which is a little bit of a faff, or remember I left the first slot in the custom settings at default. Let's go back and just have a look at that. So that first slot is set to default, except for the white balance, which we have to set manually. So if we set, if we select that setting, it instantly resets everything back to default, back to zero. Then we can go back to our white balance and bring it back to neutral. Click OK. And we are done. Now, because these simulations involve a lot of white balance adjustment, I've assigned the front button on this camera to bring up the white balance whenever I press it. So if I press it now, there's the white balance brought up straight away. If you want to do that, it's very, very simple to do on these cameras. Push and hold the display back button and that brings up all the external buttons for you to assign as you wish. So it's really a very simple matter. So function two is set to white balance. If I wanted to change that, just navigate to the right and pick one of these uh, functions to assign to it. I'm going to leave it at white balance because I think it's really useful that way. So we're now back to square one. We've got our Kodachrome 2 sim edited, save, uh, created and saved and we're now ready to shoot it. So that's how to cook film recipes on the Fujifilm X cameras. As you can see, there are one or two quirks and foibles you'll need to get used to before you become fully confident with it. But once you do, you'll realize what successful simulations these are and how they really open up the power and the potential of these cameras. And when you're really familiar with it, you can have a go at cooking up some recipes of your own. So that's it from me. For now, please don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell thing before you go. And if you like the content on this channel and you'd like to help it to grow and develop, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash xenography. I'm going to play you out with a few images that I've shot using these lovely Fujifilm simulations. And I will see you next time for some more xenography.